Hello everyone, my name is Robert Woodward, I'm a Client Relationship Consultant here at Capsim, and we are going to be talking about, um, about finance today. So I thank you for attending this webinar, hopefully it will be beneficial. Just as a reminder, um, the webinar is being recorded, so there's no need for, for note taking. Then again, if, uh, if that helps you learn best, then, then do what works for you. If you have a generic question, something that may apply to, to, to others in attendance, go ahead and uh, send me a, a, a question and uh, we'll hit those after we, after we cover the topic today in probably the last 10 or 15 minutes. If it's a specific in industry question, uh, please reach out to our support team at 877-477-8787 or send us an email to support at capsim.com. Okay, so on that note, I'm starting from my login screen, and I'm going to log in, and we're going to talk about finance. Now, I am in, I believe, the fifth round, so your situation may be different. Um, I've set it up so a, a number of different situations that you may come across um, are occurring. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and launch everything. Now there are R and D, marketing, and production decisions in there. Okay, so with that with that in mind, it's essentially ready to for us to finance everything. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind is that in later rounds, if you have the TQM module available to you, I recommend you probably do that one before you do some financing. Reason being is it's going to change possibly your forecast numbers as well as the cost of producing um, your your uh, your product. With, with that with that being said, it's going to significantly affect your your financial decisions. So maybe you need to do some financing for it. Maybe the benefits of TQM are sufficient to where you don't need to. Okay, but either way, I recommend finance always be the last one. Okay, that way you are not restricting your decisions based upon your financing. Um, you instead are doing the financing to manage the, the the company and make sure that the company doesn't run out of cash while it is implementing its strategy. Okay. Now of course, if you get to the finance and things just don't quite work out, then that's a good communication um, opportunity to discuss with the, the other departments. Alright, so here is what I'm looking at. Alright, so up top we have any investments that are carrying over from production. So I see 92 million six hundred thousand for total investment. All right, that is plant and equipment that I am purchasing. If I am selling anything, then I'm going to see that here in red. So in other words, if this was 92 million and this was 25 million, then I would subtract the 25 from the 92 because I don't need to finance that amount. Okay, because that is coming from the selling of assets I already have. Okay, now. This is the section where we are dealing with um, financing through through equity, okay, or the retirement of of uh, some equity that we have. So, for example, this is the number of shares we have. Of course, that's a thousand. So we have three point three million shares. We have stock price. We got our current earnings per share based upon our forecast. Okay, and just as a reminder, everything you see here, cash position earnings per share, um, those are performance based 100% on your forecast. So of course, make sure that the forecasting is a, that it's in there in place and there's not, uh, it's not being based upon a, a benchmark prediction, which we've covered in the past where it's not a, a, a good indicator. Okay, now you're also given what you can raise through selling of stock. Now just as a one thing to keep in mind is that you have these information bubbles. Okay, you can only sell a certain amount, and there are some brokerage fees on selling of the stock. Okay, so you can research and find out what those brokerage fees are when you when you decide to sell that. So, if I were to say I'm going to spend, I'm going to raise 20 million in stock, you're not going to get a full 20 million here. You're going to get a portion of it. You're going to get the majority, but you are losing a bit. Okay. Or if you're in the situation where you don't need to do um, to do a lot of financing, perhaps your company is, is is running well. You have all the products you want, 
you have sufficient automations for those and you have excess cash, this is a great time to manage your idle assets. Okay? And to buy some stock back, you can even offer dividends. Okay? Both of them are going to have an impact on your stock price. So the higher the stock price, the better. Um, and it helps you, it helps prevent you from having too much assets that's just sitting there. Okay, because that, that that looks pretty poor um, to to your future uh, to those who are looking into investing into your company. Okay, so this is where you are essentially running to the bank, you know, talking to your personal banker and saying, "I need a loan. I just need something that's going to satisfy me for the year." Okay, you are required to pay it back the following year. So, for example, I have forty million dollars, a little over forty million dollars that I borrowed in last year, or perhaps it's a bond from uh, that was purchased before the simulation began that came due. Okay, That's all going to be lumped in there if one is um, required to pay one back. Okay, Now, with here, you're not given exactly the amount you could borrow, Okay, per se, like max stock or max issue. For, for the long term. However, you just type in an insanely large number and it's going to correct it saying, hey, this is your, this is your number, which is helpful in case you do need, a, do need to borrow that. Okay? Now, over here we got our long-term debt. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the long-term debt that we are, um, bonds that we have sold that we're going to sell off, that we want to sell off early. Okay? We want to avoid maybe an interest payment. Um, maybe we're trying to reduce our leverage. Okay, both are good situations for that. Okay, long-term debt. This is where you are selling a long-term bond. Okay, so a 10-year, essentially a 10-year loan, where there is going to be an interest payment, and you're required to pay the lump sum back at the end of the end of the term. Okay, now difference between um, the methods of funding is stocks and bonds are both long-term funding which should be used to finance long-term projects, meaning plant and equipment automation. Okay? If you finance those, um, those plant improvements and you need extra cash or you want to finance or borrow a little bit to cover some of your receivables or your inventories, that's a perfect time to just take care of something in the short term. Okay? So... With, with that being said, the next area, we're looking at the receivables and the payables. Now, you start off at a base of 30 and 30. Now, as of right now, I've changed them. doesn't necessarily mean it's, um, it's, it's the, the most wise decision. But if you offer better credit terms, meaning higher than 30, there is a little bit of benefit, Okay, meaning it's going to drive a little bit of demand. Think of it possibly as a Walmart or Kmart's layaway program. There's going to be some people who buy on credit. Okay? Some people who wouldn't have purchased something from you unless you offered them a little bit extra time to pay them back. So it helps drive a little bit of demand. Okay? Now for payables, this deals mainly with your production. Okay? If you reduce the days, pay your suppliers faster, then there's less chance of any parcel deliveries being late. And with that being said, instead of having your laborers waiting a little bit to, to do the work, now they have uh, the opportunity to, to not wait, meaning they're going to get the full output out. So as you play around with this, this will affect your forecast. This will affect the benchmark predictions in, in, in a sense, in a little bit. Okay? This will affect um, your production after adjustment number on, on your production. So go and play with those numbers. Look in your online guide because it's going to give you uh, instructions of how those affect you. Of course, how it relates to the simulation. Now, of course, you pay people you pay people faster and you give people more time to pay you back. That's eating into your cash flows. That's cash that's, no, that's not there yet. So there are downsides to changing those. Okay, now with the current situation that I'm in, I am investing $92.6 million. Okay, about all I could possibly possibly raise from being aggressive and trying to grow my company. Now, with that in mind, my job is to try to finance 
than 92 million. Okay, so if I were to fund the full amount through stock, okay, and I'm going to fund the majority of it through debt. Okay, so I'm covering 80, 92, right about 92 million. Okay, give me one moment while I recalculate. Hopefully my internet has not failed, so hopefully you all can still hear me. Ooh. All right, there we are. Okay, so back to where we were. I am spending the $37 million in stock, and I am essentially spending the whole amount in bonds. Okay, so I am fully financing my plan of pregnancy, which is, which is good. However, I'm still having a cash flow issue. Okay, so this is a situation where if my financing is fully covering my investments, then there appears to be an issue on operations. So maybe I am just not as profitable as, as what, I, what, I, what I was last year. Maybe... It's because I got a current debt that's coming due, okay? Maybe um, I just got too much inventory, okay? So there's, there's numerous reasons. But in this situation, assuming your forecast was how you want it, okay? You're confident in what they do. This is a situation where you take out a current debt, okay? Now, you could cover 100% of it, okay? Now, of course, there are fees, so you're going to lose a little bit, okay? Now, in addition, you want to give yourself a little bit of a cash cushion. It's going to alleviate a lot of your risk of receiving an emergency loan. It's important that you're communicating with your marketing manager so you know if your forecast that's provided is best case, worst case, or maybe even just the actual. Okay, With it being an actual, you cover about 5 or so percent of your sales as cash, it's going to alleviate some of your risk. So for example, 200 million, 267 million, 5% of that would be higher over 10 million. So that would be an appropriate cash cushion based upon your expected forecast. Now, if it's a conservative forecast, in other words, if instead of these numbers, I were to say to drop a few things by a couple hundred just so I could see what's the likely occurrence or what's the likely outcome in terms of cash if I sell less. So in that case, you're going to want to borrow more, okay, to cover yourself. Okay, and I'm not sure if that went through. Give me a moment. Okay, so in that case, yeah, I would probably borrow when I have at least the ten million or, or ten million in cash, assuming the actual and probably less with, with assuming the worst case scenario. Of course, you, you still want to alleviate as much risk as you possibly can. Okay, so as you're playing with these numbers, make sure that you're in a, uh, a situation where you're, you're content, where you have done everything you can to, to avoid, of, of course, assuming the forecast is, is within the ballpark. Now, say perhaps, Instead of doing so much in investing, I'm pretty good with my plants, and I don't need to do as much in, in investment. Okay, you're going to get in a situation where instead of 90, you got 20, so maybe maybe 10 million here, and maybe 10 million here. Oh, and that's a thousand. So 10. Give me one moment. Okay. I'm going to change a couple forecasts, so give me one moment. Because I know I'm going to sell more than this. Something like that will work. When I go back to my finance page, now I'm in a situation where I have excess cash. Now, in other words, if I have this much cash, perhaps that's too much. Uh, of course, assuming, again, I'm in a worst-case scenario. Now, if I were to go to some of my ratios, I see here that I have 94 days of working capital. That's a little too much. It's more than what we need 
it, you know, it kind of makes sense with us sitting on 20 plus million dollars of cash. So with that in mind, this is a good opportunity to give back to some of your investors or to just perhaps buy back some of the stock that you've sold or maybe just don't do all the funding okay because there are situations where you don't need to fund a hundred percent of it okay so if that being said I still have 15 million dollars in cash perhaps I would buy back a little stock now one thing to keep in mind here is that when you do that it's going to have a positive effect on the earnings per share which is going to correlate to an increase in your stock price because okay, it's not affecting your profits perhaps per se but because you have less shares outstanding the earnings per the earnings are higher per share okay let's see here let's open up to a few qu more few questions before I go too long all right let's see here okay quick question maybe a little bit of a clarification how do we know when to buy and sell stock okay you sell stock when you need to fund any plan improvements okay you don't use it to to satisfy a, a current need okay any inventories receivables that's that's something that you would run to the bank for okay you can buy back stock when maybe your leverage is too low because you have too much equity sitting there maybe you have too much working capital okay so that's your current assets minus your current liabilities is going to work out to that um, so you essentially base it upon your assumed cash position okay let's see here now what are the advantages of, of using long term versus the short term now if you were to look at uh, look at that a little bit you're gonna see that there is a higher interest rate on the long-term debt than the short-term okay and there's fees associated with it as well so essentially the advantage is this one you're obligated to pay back immediately you pay back next year so now I have a little bit of an issue in, in the current situation of having to pay back the 41 million dollars and that's a lot of money this you sell a bond it's not due for 10 years now if you if you if think about it simulation is only eight years so technically you can borrow something and you're not required to pay it back in the time that you're operating the company okay so there is there is that advantage and that kind of offsets a little bit of the interest rate plus if you're trying to finance plan improvements off of what you have in operations um, it's going to get you into a liquidity issue in a situation where there is a lot of risk. Okay. All right. Now let's see here. Now just a little little bit of clarification here on these bonds. So I see a series number fourteen zero S twenty twenty one. Okay. Essentially, what that means is this was the interest rate when I sold the bond okay this is the year that it comes due okay so now when I say comes due it comes due at the end of one year and then you pay it back in the following year so if I was in 2021 and let's see I'm in 2020 if I was in 2021 then I would see that amount listed as a maturing long-term debt letting me know that something is coming that I'm gonna to have to pay back okay in the following year that would no longer show up as a bond here instead it's going to convert to a current debt okay current because it's due in 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 that current year okay now let's see here and just as a reminder, if you all have any questions, please go ahead and, uh, and let me know. Let me, while I have a minute, while I'm waiting for some questions, let me go ahead and show you some resources that can be helpful. Okay, first off, help, online help. There are some frequently asked questions when you, when you go directly from this point. If you wanted to look at finance, there's 15 or so questions. 
which one or two of which you might have. So click on those, read it, you know, get some information, maybe a little bit of clarification on something, or you can search using this tool to, to get that extra clarification. Now, a couple other resources for finance. Under f when you, let me go back, so frequently asked questions, click on the link team member guide. Number four, managing your company. Click on finance 4.4. Okay. You're going to get seven pages of information, a lot of which we have covered today, including some. Okay, so lots of good information. We talked about credit policy. Okay. It goes into those advantages that I mentioned and maybe some disadvantages. Okay. One thing that we didn't really talk about was an emergency loan. If you get an emergency loan, you get a 7.5% penalty on top of the current, the current debt rate. And it converts to that current debt, so you're obligated to pay it back next year, which is why you really want to avoid those, because okay? that interest rate, if you base it upon where we were, that's going to be about 20.3%, I believe, okay? which is credit card um, type interest rates, which are horrendous. Okay. Now, if you prefer to see it in a little bit in video form, there's a video demonstration. Okay. Got three minutes of entering decisions, talking about a few, a few details. Okay, so I recommend you all take a look at that. All right, give me one moment. And let me see if there's anything else that I needs to be pointed out. Now, just uh, as a reminder, there are these information bubbles for everything. So if you need any clarification, I recommend you you um, you read those. This right here is where you ended last year. Okay, so nothing you do is going to change that number. This is the cash position that you're interested in. To make sure that that's a positive number, you always do want to have your earnings per share as, as high as possible. Of course, with those, with those, uh, the forecast being what you want it to be, or what you actually think it's going to be, not what you want. Okay. All right, let's see here. Okay, now let's give everyone one more minute to go ahead and ask ask any questions, and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you where the where the recordings are going to be posted. Um, the ones from that that were a little bit delayed, those are all uploaded now, and I'll show you where those are located at. And then this one should be there um, probably sometime tomorrow, you know, or early tomorrow. I imagine we'll have that that uploaded. All right, one question just came in. Is there a rule of thumb for ratio of long-term and shares sold? Um, it's going to depend somewhat on your strategy. If you look at the basic strategies, some mention a leverage ratio of about 1.5 to 2. Some strategies say 2 to 2.5. Okay, if your goal is to have the be on the lower range of that, maybe towards 1.5, 1.8, somewhere in that lower half, then you're going to need to lean a little bit more to the equity, okay, if you are doing some heavy investment, okay. If you are leaning more towards the, the 2 to the 2.5 range, then you're probably going to have a little bit more, more debt. Now, of course, it's going to depend upon your stock price. If you have a massive stock price, you're going to have, you may have to lean all the way to, to, um, to debt to keep your leverage from being too low, okay. Or maybe you just got to buy back some of that stock to try to try to reduce that even further. Okay, but it really it's going to depend upon your upon the situation. All right, a couple more questions. Just give me a moment. All right, uh, question by Maria. Um, that seems like kind of a more of a, a unique situation specific to, to yours. Uh, there, there's so many things that could be going on there, um, maybe not necessarily all related to financing. Um, so send send email uh, support, support at capstone.com, a quick email asking that question and see if someone can uh, look, at your, uh, look at your spreadsheet and see if they can isolate really the, the, co the cause of everything. 
Okay, a uh, couple more questions. How will not paying dividends affect the success of the company in the simulation compared to the other teams? Um, paying dividends will boost your stock price somewhat. Okay, it's not going to have nearly the effect of how high your earnings per share is calculated or even book value. Yeah, because those are the, are the two major, major deciders of the the um, of your stock price. So you don't need to have a dividend policy. However, it's a good way to use cash that you have excess of. Okay, and there are there are the benefits to it. You got to be thinking a little bit more um, about about some of your investors when you do have excess. Okay. Um. Yeah, if everyone else is 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 doing is um, paying dividends and you're not, um, there's not really any anything that uh, would be a significant issue with with doing so. Um, if you prefer to 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 buy back the stock, you know there's merit in that. Or um, maybe you're just going to run into a situation where you got excess. Okay, so. Base it more upon your your strategy, what it dictates, as well as your your situation. Okay, because every everything is unique, which is the one one of the nice things about the simulation is that you know there there's really not one advice that fits all situations. Okay, all right. If anyone has any qu other questions, reach to, reach out to our support team again, capsum or uh, support at capsum .com or 877-477-8787. Uh, please reach out to us if you need anything for signing up for future webinars and viewing the recordings from our homepage, events, below the image, select webinars, student webinars, and here's where you're going to see the recordings for any of the ones we've done previous. Okay, so, so getting started all the way through production. This is the one we'll have uploaded soon. And then we have two more next week, which are the final ones of the semester, um, covering TQM, HR, and then going over some debriefing reports. So they're both going to be good and beneficial. Um, simple as clicking the link, entering a first name, last name, and an email. You'll get a reminder. And then just make sure you, give it to, you attend those. Um, again, let us know if there's anything we um, that you need, um, technical issues, um, general questions. We're more than willing to, to help out. Hopefully this has been beneficial. Um, financing is, it, 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 it's, it's important, you know, you are relying upon some, uh, some other uh, departments. So it's good to have a little bit of information on their decision just so you can um, there's a little bit of a checks and balances going on. But but nonetheless, if you trust them, then financing is pretty simple. Okay, you're controlling your cash, controlling your ratios to make sure your company looks um, desirable to your investors. All right, on that note, good luck everyone and have a wonderful day.